When it's here at Warwick Castle in the year 1471. And these are dark and troubled times. England is at war, but she fights with herself in a wicked civil war that you will call the Wars of the Roses. Tomorrow we march upon London to take Edward from the throne and to put Henry where he should surely be. We intend to attack the capital. For this, we will need cannon. We will need siege machines. But most of all, we will need that. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest and most powerful siege engine in the world, the Warwick Castle Tribuchet! Pulling down the throwing arm and lifting the counterweight by using oxen or horses. It's just that our trebuchet was the very latest design. It was the last great flowering of these magnificent siege engines before the cannons eventually took over. You see, the horses and oxen was fine, but it did mean you could have horses and, horses and oxen with you all the while. You need to look after them. Makes things more complicated. But at the end of the 14th century, somebody, somewhere, had a stroke of genius by combining medieval building techniques and siege technology. To do this, they took medieval cranes, which are powered by men walking inside wheels. They took two crane wheels and they put them inside the trebuchet. The two wheels are linked by a central action. You get four soldiers, you put two in each wheel and you get them to walk that way. The rope that came out the back of the machine to the tractor goes the other way, up to that central axis. There it's tied on. The men's walking action tightens the rope around the axle, which pulls down the arm and lifts the counterweight. That box that hangs in the middle of the machine, that box and its contents weigh six and a half tons. So on a normal day, you will witness four soldiers lift that incredible weight through their labor. The arm is down and it's locked down by a trigger. That, obviously, is the release mechanism. Below the tri trigger, Christopher's pushed in a steel pin, so you can't pull the trigger unless you pull the pin out. Same. And then it's also locked on a chain, just to be doubly sure that this machine does not launch itself. Now, this trebuchet is capable of shooting a 100 and 50 kilo rock. <clears throat> Capable of it, but we don't do that. Why don't we do it? Because we will completely destroy the end of this beautiful island in days. So we shoot an 18 kilo rock. It sits in a sling in the middle of the machine. That's how it works. There's a rope at the end of the arm where Chris is standing. It's permanently fixed. It runs to the middle of the machine where there's a net section. The rock is placed into the net. The rope continues back and goes onto the hook where Chris has just got his hand. That hook is crucial to the machine. That's not the correct shape to go in this fire. So what you're looking at there is a slingshot. The biggest slingshot you will ever see. Stone is loaded. So Christopher steps up and takes full responsibility for his trebuchet. First of all, he removes that chain. Then he gently pulls the pin from below the trigger, making the machine live. Steps down. He makes his final checks that all is good and all is well. Nothing's wondered off to our shooting mate. 22 tons, ladies and gentlemen. 22 tons of whirring dead. If this goes wrong, our trebuchet master will be smashed to pieces. So he puts on a tin hat. We don't know why, but it's actually in the heaven safety room. What would he do? All right then, guys, let's do this together. Let's all count down from 10 to zero. When you get to zero, I want you to yell launch as loud as you can, and that's his signal to pull the trigger. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are we ready to count? Yeah. Come on then guys, let's do it. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six,
150 miles an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, the Warwick Castle Trebuchet! And can we please have a special cheer for Christopher Frost, our Trebuchet man.